Hey, I am back to continue the series on inhalation emergencies. So if you accidentally inhale unsafe essential oils, or maybe your child was exposed to the aroma of essential oils not safe for their age group, or maybe you dropped a bottle of essential oils and the aroma is filling the room, these are some things that you can do in that situation. Maybe it's even over inhalation of essential oils. Maybe you diffuse too long, even essential oils that are safe for you. Or maybe you thought you were diffusing carefully, but you reacted anyways. So let's get started on some things that you can do. There's a number of situations, um, things that you can do if overexposed. Now, before I get into that, actually, what I want to mention is what this looks like. So what does it look like to have an overexposure of inhalation of essential oils? This can cause labored breathing. This can cause an uncomfortable feeling in your chest. Um, in severe cases, choking. You may feel nauseated. You may get headaches or your child may get headaches. These are some ways that essential oils can cause breathing issues, especially um, specifically with children with eucalyptus that has one eight, high 1,8 cineol, which is a constituent in eucalyptus, constituent in rosemary, and some other essential oils. This can also happen due to the menthol and peppermint. And this is typically going to affect children, but can also affect adults, especially um, people that are prone to asthma and, and all of that. But in general, like any essential oil literally can cause breathing issues if you over inhale, or maybe you have an allergy. So if you do notice any of those signs of feeling unwell um, relating to the over inhalation or the exposure to essential oils that you are reacting to, what you wanna do is you wanna get some fresh air. So either walk outside, take a little walk, get some fresh air, open your windows in your house if you can't go outside, crack those windows open, get your face close to those windows so that you can get some fresh air, maybe run some fans, definitely remove yourself from the room. So if essential oils have spilled, what you want to do is you want to absorb those essential oils in some baking soda or maybe some coffee grounds. Just dump them right on top of that essential oil spill. You want to take some paper towels. If you have gloves, put some gloves on, take some paper towels and wipe all of that up. The reason why you don't want to use regular towels, you want disposable towels is because all of that essential oil will be soaked up and you want to just throw it away. It will be way too intense to go through your washing machine. It may even have too much essential oil in it once it gets to your dryer and it could pose a fire hazard potentially. Now, while adding a few drops of essential oil to your dryer balls is safe and won't pose a fire hazard, a soaking um, wet towel of essential oils might. So again, add baking soda or coffee grounds to absorb as much of that essential oil as possible. Remove with paper towels, add those paper towels to a baggie and seal it. You wanna make sure that you throw it away outside of your home if possible. If you have a garage with a garbage can in it that you can throw it in there or outside somewhere where you are not going to be continually smelling it. Because if you throw it in like your kitchen trash or some trash that may be open or it will be opened frequently through the day, you might be hit with that aroma. So if you do happen to use cloths, make sure you do launder immediately. Hang to dry and that will lessen your risk of fire when adding to a dryer with high heat. And that will eliminate a strong smell of essential oils from the dryer as well. Keep windows open as long as possible to clear the air. You wanna make sure you get as much fresh air as possible. Don't underestimate the fact of that fresh air will help a lot in this situation. You may be so overwhelmed with the aroma that you might not smell it anymore. Your olfactory fatigue may kick in. And what olfactory fatigue is, is that awesome thing that our noses can do in a situation where we are overexposed to aroma. So if you smell a skunk outside, and then in a couple of minutes, you don't realize that you're smelling it anymore, the smell is still there. Like it's still there, it's just your nose has tuned it out. 
just like if you are baking bread or you know you're in the kitchen for a few hours baking something and you probably don't really notice the smell after a while but somebody walking right into the kitchen is like oh my gosh it smells amazing and you're like oh really like you didn't really notice it anymore that is because of olfactory fatigue so even if you don't think that the that the smell is really strong, please get fresh air. That will help a lot and eliminate the potential for you to have um, the nauseated feeling or feeling like you have a headache. Um, and definitely, if you have any pets, make sure that they are out of the room. If you have any children, make sure everyone is out of the room as quickly as possible. Now, depending on the severity of the reaction, like you may not really notice a whole lot other than the smells really strong, but you may need to avoid essential oils for a while, even inhalation, because you may have been overexposed, especially the ones that you are exposed to. In most cases, the fresh air will make you feel better right away, but just keep in mind, like if you dropped a bottle of peppermint, you may be, your body may react oversensitively to that peppermint in the future. So give yourself a few months before re-exposing yourself to that peppermint. I had a friend um, several years ago, she dropped a bottle of lemongrass essential oil in her kitchen and she became so sensitized, even though she was just smelling it, but she had to deal with picking up all of the, the mess, right? So um, even blends that had lemongrass in it, even at a low dilution, she reacted to, her skin turned red. So be very careful and aware and understand that even over inhalation of essential oils can have an effect on your body. Now, the good news is there's no long-term effect on the liver or other organs in general. Um, maybe if you dropped an essential oil that's potentially carcinogenic or severely toxic, that may be a situation where um, your body might have to deal with it a bit. You may feel fatigued for a little bit. Um, so keep that in mind and just watch out for any signs like that. Of course, if you ever have any concerns, you can call Poison Control at 888-222-1222. So if you have any questions at all about this, please let me know. Again, anyone can have a reaction to the over-inhalation of essential oils, but there are a couple of essential oils specifically that children can react to. Again, those are eucalyptus and rosemary. Those are the most common ones that have high amounts of a constituent called 1,8-cineol, and that is naturally occurring. So that is not found in any adulterated oils. I mean, it may be, but I'm just saying it's not like, oh, that's only if it's an adulterated oil. No, pure, genuine, awesome, amazing essential oils of rosemary and eucalyptus will have high amounts of 1,8-cineol. Same with peppermint. Menthol is a constituent naturally occurring in peppermint essential oil. Even high quality essential oil will have these constituents. That's what makes them um, the essential oils. Like if without the 1,8-cineol and without the, the menthol, they just wouldn't be pure essential oils at all. So be aware of the essential oils that you are using. Make sure that you are looking up the safety of the essential oils before you use so that you can avoid any emergency situations.